Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, when I was a young child, full of energy, I thought the idea and the concept of taking a nap was ridiculous. Why spend time sleeping when you can be doing other things? Now, as an adult, the idea and the concept of a nap is amazing. You receive that physical rest for your body, it rejuvenates your batteries, and it's something that's simple and easy to do. But let me ask you, what's easier to do? To get physical rest for our bodies? Or to get spiritual rest for our souls? We may all think that it's easier to get physical rest, but when you really think about it, it is easier to get spiritual rest. It's easier because Jesus invites us to come to Him. So if we are weary and burdened, or whether we're having times of happiness or sadness, we all find rest in Jesus. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Matthew says, at this time, which makes us ask the question, what was happening at this time? At this time, Jesus was rebuking certain cities in Galilee where he had performed his miracles. But why is Jesus rebuking them? Jesus is rebuking them because these people who saw his miracles still refuse to repent of their sins and believe in him. Jesus even told them that if these same miracles were performed in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, even those evil and wicked people would have repented and believed. And think of how foolish these Galilean individuals were. Imagine if we knew a doctor who was able to cure all physical pain, sickness, or disease. And we have seen the doctor physically heal people, and he's doing it free of charge. What would we do if we were suffering physical ailments? We would go to that doctor to receive physical rest. Even if that doctor was on the other side of the world, we would spend all of our money to see him. So imagine how foolish it would be to reject that doctor. That's what these Galileans were doing to Jesus because they did not repent of their sins and did not believe in him. And this caused Jesus to give praise to his Father that he has revealed these things to little children who accept it and believe. It's a marvelous miracle when you really think about it. As adults, us wise and learned individuals, there are times that we can read the Bible and then we say to ourselves, I have no idea what that means. There are times when God's word can be challenging for us. But the basic message of the Bible, the message of our salvation in Jesus Christ is our Savior, is simple to understand. Even a little child can understand it. A little child can know about Jesus and believe in Him as their Savior. And it's not just little children who can do this. The Greek word here is actually the word for infants. But how is it possible that infants 
can believe in Jesus as their Savior. It is because God the Holy Spirit, through His Word, reveals Jesus to us and brings us to faith, even when we are little children. But does that mean that those who are not little children and those who are wise and learned can't be brought to faith? Of course they can be brought to faith. God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So then why does Jesus here say that it was the Father's pleasure to hide these things from the wise and the learned? Scripture gives us the answer. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God brings the lowly, the humble, the poor, the unwise, and the unlearned to faith in order to shame the wise and the learned, so that they will no longer look to their wisdom, but they would look to what God has done and possibly repent of their sins and be brought to faith. Therefore, we find rest in Jesus because God has revealed him as our Savior. But that is not the only way that we find rest in Jesus. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. We find rest in Jesus because everything has been committed to Him. Think about creation. Through Jesus all things were made, and He rules over all things for the good of those who love Him. Think of our salvation. Jesus is the one who completed our salvation and has taken away all of our sins. Think of our sanctification. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to his holy Christian church so that we may grow in faith and be guided in holiness. Everything that has been committed to Jesus, he does for us. And also think of who Jesus is and what he is like. Later on, Jesus will say, I am gentle and humble in heart. In a sense, you can say that Jesus is nothing like us. Jesus is gentle. But how gentle are we? We can be so incredibly rude and harsh with others when they don't even deserve it. Even with the people whom we love, our best friends, our parents, our children, our siblings, our fellow brothers and sisters in the faith, we can treat them like dirt and trash. Jesus is humble in heart. But how humble in heart are we? So often we think that the entire world revolves around us. We can be only concerned about our personal gain and benefit. And when we look at others, instead of viewing them as Christ, an example to show Christ's love to them, we simply view them as people who are here to serve us. We are not gentle and humble in heart. And as I said earlier, Jesus is nothing like us. But Jesus was and is everything for us. Jesus is gentle with us. If Jesus were not gentle, then he would have never come down from heaven for us. He would have distanced himself from us forever, never revealing who he was to us. He would have rightfully punished us 
as our sins deserve. But he didn't do that. He was gentle. And he was humble in heart for us. Jesus, even though he created the world, did not think that the world revolved around him. Rather, we were the world to Jesus, and he revolved around us. He was not concerned about his own personal gain or benefit. He did not view people as those who should serve him. Rather, Jesus said, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that's what Jesus did. He gave up his life to redeem us from all of our sins. Therefore, we find rest in Jesus because of who he is. He is gentle and humble in heart in order to give us rest. Which brings us to the most familiar verses in this section. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We find rest in Jesus in multiple different ways in these verses. We find rest in Jesus because he invites us to come to him. Remember those times when your parents are angry and furious at you because of something you did? At that time, you're afraid to approach your parents. We may think that they're not going to listen to anything we have to say, and we dare not ask them for a single thing. That's what our spiritual condition with God should be like. God should be angry and furious at us because of our sins. We should be terrified to approach Him. God shouldn't listen to anything we have to say, and we dare not ask Him for a single thing. And yet we find rest in Jesus, because He is the one mediator between us and God. Jesus has removed that anger from God because of his death and resurrection. And so Jesus invites us to come to him. And God rejoices to hear our prayers and to answer them. We find rest in Jesus because we know who can come to him. Jesus did not say, come to me, all you who have figured life out. Come to me, all you who have no problems. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Whatever is weighing us down in life, whatever is burdening us, Whatever is making it hard for us to move forward in life, Jesus says, come to me. Cast all your burden on me because I care for you and I will give you rest. We find rest in Jesus because he tells us to look to him and learn from him. How easy it is when we are weary and burdened that we try to do it all by ourselves. How easy it is that we don't go to God right away. How easy it is for us to complain when we can't handle everything. But Jesus says, look to me. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Jesus knows our every weakness. And he knows every suffering we're going through. Not only because of his all-knowing wisdom, but because he personally went through every suffering that we go through. He knows how important rest is. And so he tells us to look to him and learn from him so that we may receive his rest. 
And the final way we find rest in Jesus is that the yoke that we carry in life is light. Sure, it's easy for us to automatically point out how heavy of a yoke we all have to carry. But think about this. Do you have to carry the yoke of earning forgiveness and eternal life? No. That yoke has been carried by Jesus, who has done that for us. Do we have to carry the yoke of finding Jesus and bringing ourselves to faith? No. That yoke has been carried by Jesus, who has done that for us. Do we have to carry the yoke of making everything happen in our life for our good? No. That yoke is being carried by Christ, who is doing that for us. And the yoke that we do have to carry, do we carry it alone? No. That yoke is also carried by Jesus. He does not abandon us. He does not leave us. He does not forsake us. He is with us every step of the way and promises that one day He will remove that yoke from us. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when we are weary and burdened, when we can have times of happiness and times of sadness, let us all find rest in Jesus. We find rest in Jesus because God, through His Word, has revealed Jesus to us. We find rest in Jesus because He is humble, or He is gentle and humble in heart with us. We find rest in Jesus because He invites us to come to Him to receive His rest because He cares for us. Amen. Please rise. And the peace of God which transcends understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. Down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.